Hey everybody, welcome to episode 7, the last episode of the Thankful For You Mystery Box. This episode is all about the pets in your family, but I feel like you could use these to decorate your table as well. We have some really fun pet bandanas in two sizes. We have large, which I did with sublimation, and then we also have a um, one done with HTV. This was with the Copper Electric and the Caesar Easy Weed Olive, but then we also included it in a size small for you guys. This is great for your smaller dogs, works with your cats, but again, you could totally put a little piece of string through this and hang it in front of your table, so really you can do a lot with these, but I made this one with Strip Flock Pro, and then I did a matching version of the large for the small. The SVGs for this are included along with the PNGs for this, and you'll notice that this matches your maple leaf. So make sure that you uh, note that because it was really fun to be able to make them match, and you can really make a lot of things with this fun pattern. These are awesome. I can't wait to show you guys how to get started on these. I'm going to show you how to press them because there is some layering involved, and then I will show you guys these on my cute little pets. Whatever we Now, you know I couldn't leave out the pets for Thanksgiving, of course. So we're gonna upload the design for their bandana. What I'm gonna do is click Upload and Upload Image. Then click Browse and found where you put the design. So mine is in my mystery box assets under Pet Bandana. Now I have a sublimation version and an SVG. For this part, we're gonna use the SVG. Go ahead and select the one that may be an HTML document on your computer. Now what you're going to see is that this is two layers, so it's got an offset and I thought it was really fun. So what I'm going to do is just click upload. Once it's in my recent uploads, select the design and click add to canvas. Now you are going to need to resize this based on which size of bandana you are going to use. So it does come in pretty big, but it's just the nature of design space. So before I do anything else, I'm going to size it down a little bit for my bandanas. So we've included a small and a large bandana. So the small bandana, I don't want to go about more than five inches at its widest point for it just because of the size that we have to work with. So I'm going to go just a little bit down, maybe about a little over five inches. That should fit pretty well onto our bandana for the small. Now I'm going to cut both of them so that you guys can see it and we're going to use different colors. But I'm just going to click duplicate so that I don't have to go back and upload again. And then all we'll need to do is just size this one. Now this one can go quite a bit larger because this bandana is decently large. So I can usually go about seven and a half inches to eight inches. And then I just kind of double check about where I want this to sit and just make sure it looks like it's gonna fit fine. It should fit just fine where I wanna put it. I might size it down just a little bit, just so I can put it just a little bit lower. But that should be a good size for both of these bandanas. Now, like I said, I'm gonna make them different colors so that you guys can see some of the different options. We're gonna use strip flock in red and yellow here for this part because I think that's super fun because you can layer strip flock. So that's a really fun thing that you can do. So for this one, we'll use olive and electric copper. So I think what I'm gonna do, let's put the electric copper in the back. So I'm just gonna make this more of like a burnt orange color for the back and then for the I'm here for part, we're just gonna make it green. Now obviously that's not quite what it's gonna look like. It's just sort of to change the colors so that when we click make it, it'll put it all on different mats. But because we're using HTV, we do need to make sure that we mirror this. So I'm gonna select all of my designs. So both of them by just drawing a big square around them. And what I like to do is I click flip up here at the top. Now this is an item that we are going to flip horizontal and that automatically will mirror our designs for us. That way we don't have to try to remember to do it after we hit make it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and click make it and I'll show you guys how it's gonna have this all set up. Now I am using my Maker 3, so it's asking me if I wanna cut on matte. I don't, I do. So what we're gonna do is take a look at how this is gonna set up. So the first one is gonna be strip flock. That is gonna be our red strip flock. Then we're gonna cut the electric. Then it's gonna go back to the yellow strip flock. It's totally fine if we need to change the setting. And then here it's going to have us cut 
our regular easy weed. So what we'll do is set all the settings for these. It's very, very easy. For Strip Flock Pro, I find that this cuts on iron-on with more pressure really, really well. But if you haven't done Strip Flock before, do a few little test cuts using a star. So I'm going to just choose my everyday iron-on setting, and then all I want to do is change my pressure to more. Then we'll cut this out, and then we'll come back and change the setting for our um, electric. This is our Strip Flock Pro. Now, I, as always, did a test cut, so you can see I have a little star cut out. This is a little bit easier to tell the one side from the other, but what I like to always tell you to do is if you're not sure which side goes down on the mat, just take a corner and you can just peel it back a little bit with your pin pen and you'll see that one side is clear and one side is the vinyl and it's never going to cut on that little corner, so don't worry about damaging it. Now all we're going to do is load this onto our mat. Now this one is pretty um, thick and heavy, so you will want to make sure that you press it down really well onto your mat. Now we are starting with the wrong color, so I want to make sure I go with the right color. I actually wanted to start with the red, because that's going to be the background for the yellow. Now again, this cuts on the everyday iron-on setting with more pressure for my machine, but I do recommend, as always, to do some test cutting on your own machine. So all I'm going to go ahead and do is load this, and then I have our other colors ready to cut. These are going to cut on the everyday iron-on setting, and we're going to have to kind of switch between our settings for this project, but it's totally fine. It's not going to be a big deal at all. So we'll go ahead and get this one cut out, and then we'll load our next color, and we'll be ready to go. So these are the two bandanas that we're going to make. So what I like to do is I just do a quick dry fit of the whole design just so I get a better visual of how it's going to fit together. That one looks cute. Now this one's a little bit harder to see because the red is very fuzzy. So it's a little bit tough to see. And I'm going to probably need to use a little bit of heat tape. Now I do recommend having heat tape if you're working with any of the strip flock because it's not really a very sticky carrier sheet. So I'm going to go ahead and just put a little bit of heat tape on this to hold it down for when I press. Now we're just going to get some tape and then we can adjust as we kind of need to with the tape on it. It's just going to hold it down better. It's just easier to work with. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of looking for where that seaming is. I'm just making sure everything's in between those seams. So that looks really, really good. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and peel off the green layer on this one because we're going to press the electric and the um, easy weed. We're going to press the electric and the easy weed and then I'll go ahead and do the strip flock because they do press at different temperatures. The Caesar strip flock presses at 311 for about 10 to 15 seconds. So I'm going to up my pressure just a little bit more because of the seaming and there's really not an easy way to lift this. But we'll be able to press this on a pressing pillow and it will help a lot. So I'm going to do just a quick couple second press to begin. I find that the strip flock, I do about five seconds to six seconds for my first press if I'm layering. And it seems to really work best. And I don't get a lot of lifting. Now with this one, you see I did get some lifting. So what I'm going to do, because this can happen, so sometimes this just wants to do its own thing. This happens to everyone, so don't feel like it's just you. I'm going to go ahead and repress this um, just for another couple of seconds. And when I go to peel, I'm going to peel the other direction. So what I'm going to do is instead of peeling from the pie, I'm going to try peeling from up here at the top, maybe by the eye. And I do want to go slow and kind of peel it like I would if I was doing regular vinyl with transfer tape. Now I do want to make sure I peel off of the tape. And I'm just going to peel it downward, and that should help some. Sometimes you just get spots that don't want to stick right away, and that's completely okay. Now I'm going to lay down our second layer, and that's the I'm here for the pie part. That's the wording, so I'm just going to get that all centered and even where I want it. I think that looks pretty good. 
Now we are going to give this a full press for the 15 seconds. Okay, it's all done. Go ahead and pop that up. And then all I'm going to do is peel off my carrier sheet. And this is ready to go. I'm going to let it cool. But while that cools, we will turn down the press. And we're going to let this get ready to press our Caesar Easy Weed. Caesar Easy Weed presses at 305. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click set on here and then I'm just going to press the down arrow and turn it down to 305. Click set again. It does press at 15 seconds. So we can leave that and then just leave everything else and we'll let this cool down for just a couple of minutes. Once your press has cooled down, we can go ahead and just simply press this one. Now I do see it shifted a little bit when I moved it. So let me just fix that. And then we're just going to press. Now again, this one is going to press for just a couple of seconds, just enough to adhere it to the bandana. So I just press it for like five seconds, not even. And then I'm going to go ahead and carefully peel this because again, sometimes you'll get spots that just don't want to stick. That's okay. And I kind of expect it on this because of the seaming. It can make it a little bit harder for these types of things to stick. Now do keep in mind, this is pretty warm. So you will feel that heat in your fingers. And then all I'm going to do now is lay down my second layer. So this is going to be that olive. This is such a pretty color. And I'm going to make sure that's even. That looks good. And then all we're going to do is do a full press. So this is going to go for that full 15 seconds. And then we can peel the carrier sheet. And we're all done. Okay. All finished. Pop that up. And then you can peel this carrier sheet off. And this one is all finished. The next one that we're going to do is the bandana. Now this one is fun because we can actually use the scraps from the print for the bandana on our maple leaf. So we're going to kind of have a little nice matching look with our sublimation. So I have two separate sublimation sizes because we have a small bandana and a large bandana. So again, you can just print these with the PDF. I do include all the other formats in case you want to print them any other way, but I find printing the PDF just to be very, very simple. So you can see this is our small bandana. The logo is going to be much smaller, and I did print it in the middle of the page because I wanted to give you guys some leeway to make sure that everything was centered. But we can cut the corners and things like that and use those for our maple leaf. So when we lay our design down onto our sublimation sheet, I'll show you guys how to cut off some that we can use with the leaf. So what we're going to do is leave it as is. It's going to print on portrait, all of that. But we want to use print system dialog. And we're going to go into our preferences. Now for this, I want to print this on high. I like to leave it on plain paper, bright white. That works great for my settings. Go into more options, turn off high speed, and mirror your image. Then all you need to do is print it. We're going to do our pet bandanas. We have a small and a large, so we have the two separate prints. So let's start with the large one. What I love about this is that you can see through here, so it's a little bit easier. And you'll want to make sure that you do put this on the correct side. You'll see that one side, you can see that it's flat and you don't have any of the seaming, but on this side is where the seam is. So you want to place it so that the uh, print goes on to the side without the seam. So what I do is I can see through here, and I just am going to get this lined up to where I want it to be. And you just want to make sure that the top here is lined up and then I'm going to tape it down to my paper. Now I am going to trim off some of this paper just to prevent any um, like ink and stuff kind of getting on on anything. The reason I made this a full page though was because I feel like you guys could trim this off and still use some of this pattern. And it's hard to size the bandanas exactly right, so I just preferred to do it this way. So what I'm going to do, now that I have it taped down, and this is just personal preferences, I'm going to go ahead and just trim off a lot of the extra print that I don't really need. Because again, it's going to help prevent getting too much ink everywhere and things like that. And I can always save this and use it on something else. So that's kind of a fun thing that you can do. So we'll go ahead and take this one and set this over to the side really quick. And then we'll go ahead and do our small. Now with our small, we did steal a piece of our design to use for our maple leaf. So this one, again, we can see through. So we're going to go ahead and line it up to where we want it. Looks pretty good. That looks good. So then again, we'll just do the same thing. I'm just going to tape it down. I tape it down so that it doesn't move and shift. This is a heat safe tape, so you don't need to worry about it leaving residue or anything like that. This is Caesar tape. I absolutely love, love, love it. If you don't have this tape, highly recommend. Check it out. 
So then we're going to do the same thing that we did to the large and I'm going to go ahead and trim off quite a bit of our pattern. Again, we can use it or toss it. It's up to you. But this way we kind of didn't have to worry too much about getting everything exactly in the right space. Now that we have that, now I do have a piece of parchment paper left over from the one design, so that should work pretty good for one of my layers. But I do want to make sure I have a couple layers here because again, we've got that paper sticking out, so it's going to transfer a little bit of ink no matter what we do. So what I'm going to do is cut one sheet and I'm going to fold it in half and that is going to be the sheet for the bottom. So we're going to have that well covered. And then I'm going to flip this over and I like to have a second cover on the front. This is just personal preference for me. You don't have to, but I like to. So I'm just going to go ahead and trim off another sheet. And you can do any this kind of any way you want. You can either do it like that or you can, you know, fold this and make this your top sheet. It's up to you and how you want to do it. Whatever works, whatever makes you happy. There's no right or really wrong way to cover your design. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, if it's bugging you that it keeps popping up, you can use a little tape. Um, that's the one thing that I like about this is that if it's driving you nuts that it won't stay flat, just tape it down. Now, I do have a little spot here that I am going to just throw a piece of butcher paper on just to be safe. So we'll press these at 395 for 60 seconds. I will get this one all set and ready to press as well in a little butcher paper sandwich. We're ready to press the large pet bandana, so I just want to make sure that I have this the right way. So this is actually the incorrect way. This is something that you'll want to make sure that you know. Your sublimation print should be on the top, so it's he hitting the heating element. So that's just something you want to be aware of when you do sublimation. Make sure it's sublimation print, blank, not blank, then sublimation print. So we're going to press this on a medium pressure for about 60 seconds. Now be aware this is going to be very, very warm, so we're going to go ahead and open this up and we will pull this out and I'll show you guys one thing real quick. Do you see how we have this around the edge? It's from the print, totally normal, and it does, did it on this side as well. That's totally okay. That's what why we have the butcher paper. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and pull this off so that you guys can see it and then I'll give you guys a really good view of it here in just a moment. But You'll see how pretty this came out. It was really easy. I'll go ahead and press the small one. It's the same directions. And then I'll show you guys what they all look like. I want to thank my adorable fashion model bruiser for putting on this adorable bandana. What I love about this is that it's washable and it won't get ruined if they get it wet or dirty. You can just throw it right in the washer and wash it like you would anything else. And these just slip right over their collar. So they're really, really comfortable for the dog. Now the nice thing is, again, you can use this with HTV or with sublimation, whichever you prefer. So it's really up to you. I love the way the electric shines with that olive. I think it really makes it stand out. And you can see Bruiser felt really cute in his little bandana. The next model that we have is my cat Magnolia. And she was not so thrilled with the bandana, but she put up with it. Again, these are washable, they're super safe, and I really, really love them. If you guys have any questions, please let me know in those comments down below. I hope you guys had so much fun. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Have a great day, and happy crafting.